Hey y'all, welcome back to Sarah Grace Cookie Company. If you're new here, I'm Sarah Grace and I teach beginners how to decorate beautiful sugar cookies from scratch through my YouTube channel, my blog, and my monthly membership, SG Cookie Academy. So today we're talking all about royal icing. This is Royal Icing 101. So if you've never heard of royal icing, if you've never decorated a cookie, this is the perfect video for you because it's gonna start you out from the very beginning. So first, we're gonna talk about what is royal icing. Royal icing is a type of icing that dries hard and you can manipulate the consistency of royal icing to create that flood consistency that you see in all the sugar cookie decorating videos. It kind of looks like lava spreading across the surface of the cookie. Or you can use it in its piping consistency state to make beautiful details on cakes, cookies, things like that. So it's made with either meringue powder or pasteurized egg whites typically. I know you can usually find a recipe where it's like a modified glaze or some people use aqua faba which is like, I think the liquid from chickpeas. I don't know, I've never tried that, but if you're a vegan or if your local cottage food laws prohibit using egg whites or meringue powder. My recipe uses meringue powder. I kind of borrowed this recipe slash adapted it from Casey's Cakery on Instagram. Um, she's got some beautiful cookies if y'all wanna check her out. But you can also download my recipe card that has my royal icing recipe, recipe on it from my website. I'll link that in the description below as well. But I prefer to use Wilton Meringue Powder. Let's see if y'all can see that. There we go. I prefer to use a recipe that uses meringue powder just because it's a bit more shelf stable and because I find that it yields a really pretty fluffy result. Um, the recipe that I'm going to show you how to make today is one that I think is really good for beginners. It makes beautiful cookies, beautiful floral decorations. It's really burnt. It's a good one if you're getting the hang of consistency and mixing different levels of consistency in royal icing. And I think it's one that you'll really like. You'll need some type of mixer. You can use a hand mixer to make royal icing, but I prefer my KitchenAid. I love having a stand mixer because you can walk away from it, let it go for a little while, and you don't have to stand there holding the hand mixer the whole time. However, if you're just getting started and you're not ready to invest in a KitchenAid, a hand mixer will do just fine. So I've got my mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. You wanna make sure you use the paddle attachment because if you use the whisk, it's gonna incorporate a lot of air and you don't want those air bubbles that a whisk attachment will give you. You don't wanna use the dough hook attachment that comes with your mixer either because I just don't think that would really do anything for royal icing. So mine is a special KitchenAid paddle attachment. It has this little silicone edge on it, but you don't have to have that. You can use the one that comes with the KitchenAid mixer that doesn't have the silicone on it. It will do the same job and do it really well. So I'm starting with three quarters cup of warm water. I just use tap water because where I live, we have really good well water. Um, and so I don't have to worry about the taste of the water. But if you're concerned about the water's taste or anything where you live, you might want to use bottled or purified that you warmed up in the microwave a bit. You don't want it boiling. You don't want it super, super hot. You just don't want it to be cold because that can cause it to seize up a bit. This Wilton Meringue Powder can be found at Walmart. I think that's accessible to most people. You can also find it at hobby and craft shops like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, in the cake decorating section. Joann's, um, anywhere that has a pretty decent cake decorating section is gonna have meringue powder. I tried making royal icing the first time I made it with pasteurized egg whites and it turned out, but it was just really translucent looking. It wasn't mixed well. I didn't build the structure in the sugar well and it just ended up looking kind of flat and lifeless. Now you can add additives to royal icing to make it shinier, to make the bite softer, um, to add flavor. I do a basic royal icing recipe because I add tons of flavor to my cookies. My splash of vanilla is a little more than a splash. And I don't add any glycerin or corn syrup because I like the look of a matte cookie. But if you want a shinier cookie with a softer bite, you can add about a tablespoon of corn syrup or glycerin at the end of this recipe when it's finished mixing. And if you'd like to add flavoring, 
you can add vanilla extract or lemon extract or any kind of flavoring that doesn't include oil because if it has any kind of oil in it that's going to prevent the royal icing from setting up and hardening properly on that note you want to make sure that your bowl is really really clean you've washed it out with dish soap maybe even run a little vinegar around in that bowl as well as done that with your paddle attachment and anything that's going to come in contact with your royal icing because if it comes in contact with grease or any grease or oil gets mixed in, that's going to cause it to not set up and not harden properly, which would be really sad if you've put that much time into decorating your cookies. I'm adding five tablespoons of meringue powder to the water that I've already got in there. One. And I like to give it just a little fluff. You can see the cloud coming off of it. A little fluff with the tablespoon so that it's not packed too densely. Two, three, four, and five. I know some recipes don't use this much meringue powder, but I find that it makes a really beautiful, fluffy royal icing. So I like recipes that have a lot of meringue powder in them. We're just gonna give this a quick buzz with the mixer on low to medium so that the water and the meringue powder have a chance to get frothy and form a few bubbles. We don't want it to turn to meringue. We don't wanna let it go too long. This is just like a 30 second spurt of mixing. Okay, here we go. You can see the bubbles that have formed. They're a little bit frothy. It's nowhere near turning into a meringue. It's just kind of frothed a bit. Okay, now we're ready to add our powdered sugar. I'm adding two pounds of powdered sugar. They usually come in a two pound bag, so you can just dump the bag in there. But if you're using like one of the big bags from Sam's, which is what I often use, you can use a food scale to help you measure it. I'm just dumping it all in there at one time. And I do not sift my powdered sugar when making royal icing. I personally think it's kind of a waste of time because I've never had any trouble with lumps or bumps in my icing. I've never had to worry about um, clots or anything like that in my piping bag. And I don't sift my powdered sugar. So that may be a little controversial, but that's how I do it. So now I'm going to mix this just to incorporate it. This is not going to be our final result. So when it comes out looking like a hot mess, don't panic. That's how it's supposed to look. Just mix it on low medium again for about 30 seconds. That should look about like the consistency of thin honey. It's gonna look a little lumpy and wonky, but don't panic. That's what it's supposed to look like. We're gonna place a towel over our mixer just to avoid any splashing all over the kitchen because we do not need any extra cleaning today. So I'm placing a towel over my mixer and I'm gonna turn this on and allow it to mix on medium high for exactly four minutes. You don't want to go much over that four minute mark because then it'll be over mixed and it won't set up. But you don't want to go too much under that four minute mark either because then you won't get those lovely stiff peaks. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. Okay, so it's been about four minutes. And now the icing has got this beautiful fluffy texture and it's achieved stiff peaks, which look like this. Isn't it beautiful? It looks like a cloud, doesn't it? Okay, so after you're done admiring the cloud-like beautiful icing, then you can take it out of the mixer and you can mix it to the right consistency for whatever project or decorating task you're doing. So if I'm making flowers or doing some kind of stiff consistency decorating where I need something that's gonna hold its shape, or if I'm popping it out of a popping tip and I need it to maintain the shape of that popping tip to create a design like a shell, or like I said, a flower, then this straight out of the mixer consistency is exactly what I'm looking for. This is what we usually call popping consistency or thick consistency. Now, there are a few decorating tasks where you need that thick consistency. You need something that's going to maintain its shape. But if you're using a popping consistency, that might be a little bit too thick for those tasks. These tasks are a lot riding on cookies or making polka dots or um, 
designs where you want the top to be smooth. For designs like that, you'll want to create a toothpaste consistency ice. You can check out my video about how to make toothpaste consistency as well as 20 second consistency, which is the consistency I use for flooding. So you would just mix this with water in a bowl. I like to use a flat utensil. Again, my other videos that I'm going to link up here will go into more detail about achieving the right consistency. Now when you achieve the consistency you want, you'll want to place the icing into a bag of some kind. My personal favorite for cookie decorating are tipless piping bags. They look like this. You can find them on Amazon and I'll link them below. I'll also link a video about different piping methods, but it'll just depend on the project you're doing. I recommend tipless piping bags for cookie decorating, but there are some different options out there for you if you want to check that out. Now I also want to touch on storage because when I was new to Royal Icing, that was one of the big questions that I had. Royal Icing can be stored in an airtight container on the counter at room temperature for three to four days. If you're going to be storing it more than three to four days, you'll need to make sure it either goes into the fridge or the freezer. It can stay in the fridge for three to four days in an airtight container. I like to use a glass Pyrex container. And if you're storing it in the freezer, Again, same deal, airtight container, and you can store it for up to a month in the freezer that way. I do want to caution you though, if you are storing royal icing, I don't like the results of royal icing as well when it's been stored. I like to make it fresh and use it immediately if possible. Um, that's just my recommendation, but if you do need to store it, that's how you store it. And when you open it up, you need to thaw it, get it up to room temperature and put it back into your mixer. Give it another whip for about a minute or two, again with the paddle attachment, just to kind of wake it up and bring it back to life because when it's stored, sometimes royal icing can separate into something that looks like a marshmallowy, spongy con consistency texture and like a syrupy texture at the bottom. They'll separate and it's just generally not good. So you'll want to bring it back together and bring it back to life by whipping it in the stand mixer again. So I hope that's answered all your questions about royal icing. You can check out more of my videos about how to mix royal icing to the right consistency and how to decorate sugar cookies on Sarah Grace Cookie Co. the YouTube channel as well as my blog at sarahgracecookieco.com. Thanks for joining me today guys. I'll see you later. Have a good day.